Hey everybody! Hi guys! Welcome to Rolling with Nicole and today I have my friend Zoe back with me and we thought we'd do something a little fun and different today. We thought we'd have a little discussion about and educate you guys on the di disability that I have. It's called cerebral palsy and I'm pretty sure that you guys when you hear that you're wondering what it is. Mm -hmm. So we're here to educate you guys a little bit on it. We wrote like three top questions that we thought that people have in general because everybody I feel like has heard of cerebral palsy but doesn't know exactly what it is. I didn't before I met Nicole like I had heard of it but so we wrote what we thought um, most Which everybody Which we thought knew. would be like the top main questions that everybody like asked me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the first question is what is cerebral palsy? And the definition that we have that we found whenever we looked it up online it says caused by brain damage or malformation and it's an impairment of motor function and um, it, it affects the body movement and muscle. So we thought we would tell you a little bit about Nicole's uh, birth story and kind of what went down. So. so my mother was eight months pregnant with me and her water broke. She went to the hospital and the doctors decided that I was too early so they decided to just keep her. They kept her for seven days and the water kept coming out of her and they wouldn't deliver me. They finally delivered me after a week and it turned out that... And that process was when it happened. Yeah, the process of cerebral palsy happened when I, before I was born and so it can happen before or, or like during mm -hmm. or like it's usually like in, right around in that process of birth and i was like in an incubator for like a week mm -hmm. or so i want to say so everything was normal and till i was like 10 months old mm -hmm. my parents were still were starting to teach me like how to sit up and my parents were concerned because i should be I Sitting up on your own right. at that point. So they noticed I wasn't doing that, so she, they took me to a specialist, and they said, oh, she's not sitting up right. And the doctor said, oh, she's got cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. And my mother was like, what? And then she fainted in the doctor's office. Yeah. And it turned out that they always knew, but they just never told my mother. The reason why they don't tell the parents that is they want them to bond with the child before they tell them. That's what they told her then. But they don't do that anymore now. They tell them up front. Yes. And so I could see how your mom was just like, because if you totally didn't, you know, mm -hmm. know that, and then he did know that, it would be a, like super upsetting mm -hmm. to know that they like withheld that. So our mom worked with her a lot, like with like physical therapy, right? Mm -hmm. and, like, physical therapy. And, like, speech therapy and like OT, which is occupational therapy, all the therapies. A few more points that we have about cerebral palsy is that um, we wanted to point out that it is a disability, not a disease. Right. Because a lot of people think that. Yeah, they think automatically when they hear cerebral palsy. Like they, that you can develop it or catch it. It's not that at all. It's or if you like approach the person, they think that they will automatically get it. Like I've known people. Can, like, catch it. Yeah. Like I've known people that think when they hear that. When people tell them about me, they think that they're scared to come near me because they think I will give it to them. So, Or like maybe they just don't know a lot about cerebral palsy, so they're just like, it makes them nervous too. Right, like I've had people approach me in the past that if they see me in a wheelchair, they'll ask me what happened to me. And they're scared to ask me because they think it'll automatically offend me. Mm -hmm. But I am so used to it for the She's past... She's super open about it and loves to answer questions and, you know, yeah. tell people about it. It's right. my journey. Yeah, I have no problem answering questions at all. Another point is that it is unique in every case. Mm -hmm. It is non-life-threatening, um, incurable, and it's non-progressive, meaning like it doesn't get worse later or... Right. There's... Other cases where people are like nonverbal or that can't talk for themselves or like permanently in a wheelchair, you need to do like every single thing for them. In my case, it's just, it just affects like 
my motor skills. So the next um, question that we thought a lot of people were curious about is what and where does it affect your body? And it's different for everybody who has cerebral palsy. So in Nicole's case, it's very mild. There are different forms of it. But in my case, it just affects my hands and my legs. Your and, eyes a little bit. And my eyes a little bit. Nicole can walk with a walker. Mm -hmm. um, so like if we're going somewhere, she uses her walker to walk to the car. Mm -hmm. And then like around the house and whenever we're out places, we, uh, she uses a wheelchair. Which is very helpful. Mm -hmm. It is basically, sure. I would say the worst part is like my legs. My wheelchair, I couldn't survive without my wheelchair. It's basically my legs. People are like amazed when they meet me because they're like, they automatically think I'm like a vegetable or I'm nonverbal. But when they meet me, they're but like... But your speech and everything is so good. Right. You know? So I think people are surprised. They don't really expect that. Before yeah. I met Nicole and my, I was um, about to meet Nicole to come work with her. I was unsure, you know, like what, to what extent Nicole could do things. And like, I had no idea right. what to know. But like, obviously now I know once I've gotten to know her. I think a lot of people do assume that though. Like, cause a lot of people, like I said, don't know about it. And so it's like, they start thinking, oh, it's like this. Like, Talk, you know, yeah, it's like, just like kind of where your mind goes, but it's helpful. That's why we're telling you guys about it. Right. The third question that we had was, can you still have a normal life with cerebral palsy? And the answer is definitely yes. Some of the things people ask, like, can you still have an education? And the answer is yes as well. I graduated from high school mm -hmm. and I went to two years of college. Oh wait, here, we have a picture of Nicole at one of her dances. Yeah, that was my ninth grade winter formal. So it didn't, sorry, I was trying to see if I could like, if the picture had a glare. Um, it didn't stop her from like doing school events or like doing anything at school. She did all of like projects. Her mom was just showing us like all these awards that Nicole got for what was it, like science? Science, like yeah. science achievement. And I also was had- that your favorite subject? Uh, it was one of, one of them. I would say, like, I'm more of, like, a techie person, mm -hmm. so, like, I also have some awards for, like, um, for, like, computer classes and stuff like that. Yeah. It didn't stop Nicole from just, like, doing everything that you do at school. She, like, went to her dances and went to prom and graduated high school, and then she even went to two years of college. Right. Two after that. Which I will say was a different environment. I wasn't used to it. Yeah, it is like a change for everybody. <laughs> right. I think every, for every like senior, the summer after high school is like a transition period. Yeah, for sure. I decided to leave because one of the, one of the things I feel like I should mention, the doctors told my mother that I could possibly have seizures. I was fortunate enough not to have one for 22 years until I was in college. When that happened, it was very scary. And I feel like my stress level was... Like you needed to, like you couldn't focus on school at that point. Right. It was, so... That they should just like take a break and like, you know, because they didn't know if she could have one again soon or like really anything. So I think you all would just like take the time to kind of process all of it. Yeah, I mean, I finished out the semester that I was in and then mom and I, my mother and I thought it would be better for me to just yeah drop out because it was still pretty new. We didn't know if it was gonna spike. Right. But um, thankfully I haven't had one. As far as the rest of, um, you know, Nicole just like doing life just like normal like all of us, um, we still go out and go to dinner, go meet friends, we have to go out to go to appointments, we'll go to do whatever we want, it's like completely normal. We right. just have the wheelchair which helps us um, when we're out. And I will say it's a little more challenging in some places because if we go somewhere new, we don't know how accessible it is. Um, sometimes it's like really hard to get into, and my chair is so big, yeah, <laughs> to the point where like it's hard for us to get back, like get into bathrooms. We or definitely get in the doors. have challenges that when we're out places, but 
we totally work together and yeah. And it's totally worth yeah. it when we come over the ch uh, when we get over the challenge. Yeah. <laughs> like as Zoe was saying, can you have a normal life? Um, yes, you. As I covered in this video, you can get a normal education. You can still have like you can still. And this go is out. for Nicole's case. You know, like every like we talked about, everybody's case is unique. So right. Like, but um, I mean, it definitely. She still has stuff that she has to work on to get better at. But um, it just hasn't stopped Nicole, you know, from doing what she wants to do. And even with our challenges, um, we still work through it, like we said earlier. From being at home a little bit more, so she works from home just because it's easier for her. Right. And as I said in like a past video, I am starting to take over my mom's eBay business. And so I have an eBay page that I will link at the bottom of this video. Yeah, you guys should look and check it out if you guys like anything. Bye. Yeah, yeah we have an assortment of things. We have jewelry, we have belt buckles, which I will point out is the biggest seller right now. Yeah. She has so many belt buckles. And then I started awesome. doing this hobby where I had, where I started making jewelry art and some of the pieces are on my eBay page as we speak. Just go look. Yeah. There's so much stuff. Yeah. <laughs> she, we, we post new stuff every day, so yeah. we keep it pretty much updated. That's cool. Thank you all for listening, and we hope that um, this video kind of helped you understand a little bit more if you didn't know much about it. Right. And we'll be having a lot more videos to come and try to keep them interesting each time. So like and, and comment, subscribe. And I will like to point out this one, um, make one last comment before we sign off of here. If you guys had any questions, like any more questions, that was just part of the questions that oh, yeah. we were going to put in this video but if you guys have any more questions for me don't be scared to ask them ask them because i yeah, love nicole is super open about it she doesn't mind to answer questions at all no like i, I had questions for her whenever i first met her like it's so normal for her this is her journey in life so right i have no problem if you guys like i love educating people so if you guys have any questions feel free to put it in the comment section so thank you all mm -hmm. bye See you next week.